I remember when I got my first flock of chickens and it was my first winter with them and it got to be about eight degrees and I was really concerned. I had heard of chickens getting frostbite, I had heard of them getting respiratory problems in the winter, and I had even heard of them freezing to death. So obviously I did not want that to happen in my flock, but did I need to supplement heat? In an uncertain world, one thing unites us all, the chicken. From the suburbs to the big city, let's learn an inclusive and stress-free way to raise chickens. Welcome to Chickenlandia. Tupi, you look like Wolverine. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. I've seen it over and over again. A new and very well-intentioned chicken keeper goes onto Facebook or some other chicken forum and they ask the question, do I need to heat my chicken coop? Maybe they live in Nebraska or Alaska or somewhere else where there's like really extreme temperatures. So this is a legitimate question. But what will happen is everybody will say, no, you do not need heat. And a few people will say, yes, you need heat. And it will just devolve into this heated argument about the future of humanity because that's the chicken groups for you. <laughs> so I just wanna say first off that the people that are saying that you never need to heat your coop, generally, generally, they are correct. But there might be situations where you do actually need to offer some supplemental heat. So let's talk about what you've got going on so that you can make an informed decision. Oh, truth is out there. <laughs> Young, healthy chickens, depending on the breed, do better in cold temperatures than they do in hot temperatures. Chickens have feathers that are strategically placed all over their body to really insulate them. They're wearing these big down coats and at night they heat each other up as a flock. That's their job at night. And if you were to take the temperature inside the coop and then take it outside the coop, you would see a big difference because their bodies are generating heat so that they can make it through the winter. Usually people worry about the temperature in the winter, but it's actually not the cold that you need to worry about. It's the moisture in your coop. So this is counterintuitive, but what you really need to pay attention to is keeping the condensation level down in your coop. And you do that by making sure that you have really good ventilation in your coop. Now you don't want to have drafts where your chickens are roosting at night because that obviously is not a good idea. So you want to strategically place some cross ventilation in an area where they're not roosting so you get good airflow through the coop, the coop stays nice and dry, and you don't have to worry about things like frostbite and respiratory issues because it's actually moisture more than it is the temperature that will create those situations. So right now I am plugging in my heated water bowls. I give these to them in the winter because you just wanna make sure that their water isn't frozen. They really need that. They need water in the winter. <laughs> Don't let them go without water. The other thing that I use this for is I put my fermented feed in it because the fermented feed will freeze if it's really cold outside. So this is a handy way for me to keep their food warm and to keep their water warm. You could add some extra insulation in your coop if you wanted to. You could cover your windows with a thick plastic or some cardboard. I really don't do that here because I don't need to. I live in a relatively mild climate. Whatever you do to insulate your coop, just make sure that you're not covering every nook and cranny because that will affect the level of ventilation in your coop and could actually be not a good thing in the long run. Kiki. Of course she's molting right now when it's cold, right? I might have to bring you in tonight. <laughs> so one thing you might consider is doing what's called the deep litter method, which is basically a composting system on the floor of your coop and it is really cool. I used to do it in here, but when I got ducks, 
they made it really kind of impossible. <laughs> I might try again, but I don't have time to explain the whole system to you right now, but I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can read about it and find out if it might be something that would work for you. But it does generate heat because we know that composting material generates heat. That's a nifty way to keep it a little bit warmer in your coop. So let's say you have done all the right things and it's still not enough. You're running into problems. Maybe you're getting frostbite. Maybe you're getting respiratory issues in your flock and you really need some answers. Frostbite can sometimes be prevented by putting Vaseline or bag balm on the combs of chickens, especially if they have a big floppy comb. But sometimes even that isn't enough. And I had a friend that lived in an area that just had really extreme temperatures and she was like, "I what do I do? I have to supplement heat. So I think in situations like this and a few other situations that I'm going to mention to you, it is not unreasonable to supplement safer heating options, which I'm going to tell you about. The thing that really scares people and the reason why people say never put heat in your coop is because of this. The heat lamp. These really present a fire hazard in your coop. When people are concerned about them, they are right. It's a real bummer because they're cheap and they're accessible. You guys know, if you've been watching me for a while, that I really wanna make sure that I give people options that are accessible to all economic levels, but this is dangerous. They can develop dust on them and that can catch fire. If they are not secured well, they can fall and go into the chicken bedding and of course that can catch fire. If a chicken like flips out and flies into it, which you know chickens can act crazy sometimes, their feathers can catch fire and that's, that's horrible. They've even been known to just spontaneously explode. I don't want you to be in a situation where you lose your whole flock. That would obviously be terrible, but I mean, look at how close my flock is to my house. You could lose your house or worse. So I would really recommend not using this in your coop. So some of you guys know that I rescue chickens, that I keep my chickens here living with me for the duration of their life. And what that means is I have very old chickens. I've got a chicken named Cinnamon. I think she's my oldest chicken. She's nine years old. But then I have another one, her name is Ducky. <laughs> She's a little old English. She's really old. I don't know, she might be older than Cinnamon. Cinnamon sleeps in the nesting box and she's been slowing down in recent months. I really don't have a good setup for supplemental heat in the coop. So what I do with my older chickens, I actually bring them into the garage when it gets below freezing, which is not very often where I live. If you have older chickens, that might be a scenario where you have to offer supplemental heat. <laughs> If you have super young chickens, let's say you raised baby chicks in the fall and they became fully feathered during the winter, even though they're fully feathered, they might not be ready to go outside because if it's getting below 50 degrees and they've been under a heat lamp, you can't just put them outside. They could die. Like that, that has happened and it's really sad. And usually it happens when people just don't know because everybody is telling them, you don't need supplemental heat, they have feathers, but they're not taking into consideration the age of the chicken. So if you have baby chicks, they are fully feathered, they are ready to go outside, it is not unreasonable for you to offer supplemental heat in the coop and then gradually lower that temperature so that they can acclimate to the temperature outside. Another thing that you can do is just bring them inside at night and put them outside during the day. That's what I usually do because like I said, I don't have a really good setup for supplemental heat in my coop. Let's say you have super fancy chickens or breeds that just aren't very cold hardy. Then that's another scenario where if you are living in the wrong climate for them, you might have to offer supplemental heat. 
Now obviously, when, once you introduce electricity into an area, that is a fire hazard in itself. But these options that I'm gonna give you, they're relatively low wattage, they don't get really hot, so it's gonna present way less of a fire hazard for you. Two options that I really like are radiant heaters. One is the Cozy Coop and the other is the Sweeter Heater. There's a very low fire risk and a very low burn risk with these types of heaters. One of the points that people make against adding any kind of heat to your coop is actually a very good one and that is if you lose power in the middle of the night that temperature drop could mean a really bad situation that you will find in the morning. But I always say it is risk versus risk. If you're getting frostbite, if you're getting respiratory problems, if you have super old chickens that could freeze to death, if you have breeds that are really not going to thrive in such cold temperatures, you may need to consider these safer options. But I don't want that decision to come from a place of broad generalizations or a place of fear. I want them to come from an informed place so you can feel good and confident about what you're doing and get through the winter beautifully. You got this. One thing I really like to do for my chickens in the winter is offer them a yummy warming treat before they go to bed. You gotta make sure that they eat it all before they go to bed or else you'll get rodents around. You don't want that. One of my favorite things to do is to make yummy suet treats for my chickens. I have a video all about it right here. It's a 100% friendly backyard chicken education and entertainment, and you're gonna love it.